what's happening with okay CA is calculating uh, so this was made with uh, uh, design forms it's a programming language uh, which is compatible with uh, CIA with the report uh, it's some other software uh, but uh, it can be useful to complete with other checks so we can develop your own checks and add them to SIA with this uh, application so now I'm loading an application developed by me And uh, it will be like this. Uh, we will have some. Uh, this is basically for seismic code, but we'll use. We'll take the deflection from the wind, as the wind is the only uh, lateral force you have on the building. If you want to add some minimum seismic, we can also do that. But uh, for this, I'll have to establish a target for displacement. So uh, for lateral loads, not necessarily seismic forces. Uh, we have to establish a target which is quite dependent on your cladding system. So we can have building has non-structural elements of brittle materials attached to the structure, which is in the case of glass. So if we have glass within the frames of your concrete building, they have little uh, displacement allowed. If we have ductile yes. non-structural elements like masonry, uh, we have a smaller target, a uh, bigger target of displacement allowed, and if it has no has ductile non-structural elements, it means that the cladding system is somehow independent from the structure, so it doesn't move. The differences is like this: uh, the first one is the toughest, which is five uh, per. Uh, thousand let's say so not percent but per thousand while uh, the other is five seven point five per thousand and the last is uh, let's say one percent or ten uh, per thousand so we'll set the strictest to be on the safe side then the behavior factor is a factor that it uses in seismic analysis which amplifies the seismic displacement with uh, the behavior factor applied for the load so in our situation it will be one as we take the exact uh, displacement from the CR model uh, and then uh, actually okay i let it calculate but we didn't need it uh, i needed also to activate the irs model anyways uh, after setting this i will need the building dominant period which will be provided by this analysis and uh, this option is not important it's only for seismic uh, relevancy but it's for the ultimate limit states and not the serviceability so we will limit to serviceability as we don't want to the glass elements to shatter uh, while the other is for structure general stability. Uh, okay, we'll have to let it uh, calculate and then we'll be able. And in the meantime, can you tell me the heights? Can you open your SIA model maybe and uh, tell me the heights from the bottom to the top of the stories? So uh, what is this relevant? displacement about. Uh, imagine that this is, uh, let's say, the undeformed building, and this is the deformed that is caused by the wind. So this is caused by wind. And for each story, we will get some displacements. So uh, here can be one story, there can be another story and what we are going to check is actually a rotation so uh, this drift check is about the maximum rotation 
of an element. So we are measuring here an angle of let's say a theta angle. So what is relevant yeah. here is the relative displacement and in order to get a relative displacement we need to subtract uh, I'll go back to the first one so it will have some displacement here a relative displacement is the difference between the previous displacement and the actual displacement so for here we will consider this as a displacement so this meaning this area this is a relative displacement so it's actually the difference between the previous deflection and the actual deflection so in this in the following situation this is a relative displacement so this is what we will need and SIA offers you this type of relative displacement if you use the IRS model which is the simplified uh, model so you get automatic this uh, relative displacement which are relevant for to prevent the window shatter by doing uh, this uh, this uh, analysis with the simplified dynamic mode uh, let's get back to see okay we have something uh, first of all we'll go to see the period of your building so I'll go to results now. I can deactivate those floors, they're not relevant anymore to see. And I deactivate whatever dimensions. And uh, now we should see how the story, uh, the building moves through the mass combination. Mass meaning actually okay but we don't have a mass selected value not found why not because we did a model analysis however i think we needed to create some uh, earthquake uh, analysis so uh, what we're going to do is uh, create some seismic load case although it's only for this analysis it won't we won't consider it for the loads so we will create now a seismic case which I'll call SX as a seismic per X direction and uh, it will be a variable action however it will be in a separate load case it will be together with the other component and the load type will be dynamic uh, seismic okay and here we'll say it's dynamic Seismicity. I'll choose a very low value seismic force and it doesn't really matter what I'm choosing now because uh, I won't take it into combination so it's only to have this uh, uh, values for the displacement so I'll go here to direction X and uh, I'll choose whatever something I can handle here it's a Romanian it doesn't matter I'll choose something with small seismic value okay one and go to okay okay and I have to say that it will be um, an IRS model okay as X and I'll create another with the seismic force on the Y direction and this will be only to have some uh, results so S Y and I'll change the spectrum function to the Y direction
Yes. Try to make a can be can be find by the user. Yes, of course. Which user because, can uh, my, my Just a second. We'll need to go here to calculate and. Uh, Okay, I'll hit this as well, and I'll go to solver and say here 20, and I'll use improved reduce system method. So in the solver, I have to do these settings in order to get those displacements, and then I'll hit OK, and only then I will find the displacement for each story. Of course, this is one approach. Another approach would be to assume that on each level I have a rigid diaphragm and uh, that all nodes move the same so in that situation i wouldn't need any of these steps so i wouldn't need to define a seismic action and uh, the uh, improve reduce system and i would get automatic relative displacement uh, so in the other option if i want to oh okay uh, i have to assign masses to story first so uh, the approach I'm so showing you provides some advantages over just looking at displacements. So uh, I will show you the advantages, why we are doing these extra steps instead of just watching displacements per story. So when we did that global check wow. according to the US standard, we just looked at the maximum displaced node at the top and we checked with the building height divided by 500. For this one, we are doing something more yes. advanced for each level to see, actually we evaluate the rotation because it's the rotation of a level that can affect the cladding system. Now I'm just uh, automatically allocating and then I'll say no, calculate and hit OK. So only now we will get this uh, value, okay, doesn't matter. We will get values for uh, the relative displacements, which can we can complete in this one. This is based on Eurocode 8. Uh, you can program yourself; it's uh, not a real challenge. But uh, this is the way we can do this design according to Eurocode entirely. So uh, anyway, I see here there are some limitation regarding. Okay, if I say totally, it's no problem. We'll see all the floors. This uh, is a calculation uh, in uh, uh, just only seismic. It's only seismic in uh, Eurocode 8. It says that in case of earthquake, uh, the wind load is neglected, so it's not covered the case when there are big winds and uh, big earthquakes at the same time. So we evaluate wind and earthquake in different combination, but not uh, all together. 